Well, I... I guess the intro is going to be awkward silence then. Too bad you don't have a mouth organ. <laughs> what did you guys think? You guys think we're going to do a, something better this week? Does it have to be better every week? Are we going to set up something where we can never outdo ourselves? And we're, we're you know, we're going to be jumping out of a, an airplane wrestling alligators while having a banana fight. That's where that's what it's going to go to if we keep trying to do more each week. You guys lost the intro lottery this week. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, but if you guys want like a you know a random surprise. Um, you should subscribe to the Beer Games Beer Twitch channel. In fact, we've all been streaming a lot. You should subscribe to sub, 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 subscribe. You should subscribe to all of our different uh, Twitch channels. Last night I built a PC on the uh, Twitch channel, so there were like four or five hundred people in there hanging out. So, if you guys are watching now, hi all you awesome four or five hundred people. But all the rest of you guys may not know about it. So we do stream frequently, and sometimes it's gameplay. Sometimes it's something random to brighten up your day or to make you think. Or sometimes it's just you know us sitting here talking to the community. So. I'll put those in the description. Be sure to subscribe to all of our different Twitch channels. Also, uh, just in time for the holidays, we've got mugs. Everyone's going to be enjoying a delicious beverage. This is not one of the mugs. I don't have one yet. They're that new. I, they, they haven't even been shipped to me. But the logo mugs are in. And the logo mugs, it's the exact same cup as this, pretty much. Just this black cup. There's a logo on each side. So it's friendly for righties and lefties. So thank you guys a lot for making are mugs possible you know something really funny wendell um the the guy that helped us design the original shirts like the jesus quick saves um and the the wasd um he was the guy who drew all these he emailed me today out of the blue just i haven't talked to him since 2011 he said he's been busy with a lot of things doing photography and whatnot and um he wanted to know like hey listen do you guys want any new t-shirt design so i was like hey we should talk about it so he wants ideas for t-shirts and he can come up with a design. So let us know in the comments on our website what other t-shirt, you know, t-shirts you guys would like to see. Maybe it's something from, maybe it's a one-liner from one of our videos or something like that. Or maybe it's just a, a, an idea for a shirt that you, you know, you really want. If you've got your own artistic ideas, you can submit those as well. And if I use them, I'll send you a hundred bucks. How's that? So Note that posting in the comments, you relinquish any and all rights to any idea that you have to tech sync it forever, worldwide distribution license, blah, 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 fine print, more to live. Yep. <laughs> more 11 <laughs> I've got to I've got to jump back on at 11 now Wendell and tell him more oh we've <laughs> obligated ourselves legally <laughs> but no I, I just said that if you guys designed it yourself like come up with the artwork and we use it I will send you $100 or you know I'll send you something uh, if you guys don't want $100 I'll send you like a gaming mouse or whatever I've got around here you just let me know what you want and I'll I like to work with people it's it's fun and, and hook them up with different things also, but in exchange for good and valuable consideration, you grant a worldwide non-exclusive license to, or no, wait. Exclusive. Worldwide exclusive, yeah. yeah. But uh, in, 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 uh, for this good and valuable consideration, you grant a worldwide and exclusive license to techsyndicate.com and its subsidiaries. We have subsidiaries? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm doing the big. <laughs> Do 2014, we're going to, you know, entertainment company take over the world type thing. Hey, so, as soon as Scruffy the janitor's uh, iPhone app takes off, we are all retiring. I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of the Scruffy the janitor thing. <laughs> is that is yeah. that something about my beer? Anyway, the Steam OS. <laughs> the Steam OS is out like right this minute. You guys can go and grab it. However, Valve is saying that you know what? Wait until sometime in 2014. Only the hardcore people who want to, you know, tinker around with Linux should be grabbing it right now. So if you want to go and tinker around with Linux and test it out and see what it's all about, do that. Uh, I'm going to be putting it on the system that I built with the APU and just you know, see how it runs. I've got a, um, a BitPhoenix Colossus, the ATX version, the micro ATX version. And, you know, I put, um, I put our old friend, the uh, 6800K from AMD in there. And we're, I'm going to play around with that just a little bit and see how it runs. But it could be interesting. You've got a Steam box right there on your desk, don't you, Wendell? Yes, we have this awesome Steam box that is only 4.9 inches tall, and that may or may not be Steam OS sticking out of it because I'm old school and I did it on a CD instead of <laughs> USB because I'm a crazy person. Verbatim. But, uh, yeah, this <laughs> has got a GTX 770 in it with the uh, ACX cooler. It's an EVGA, and this thing is tiny. Speaking of EG EVGA, they've announced the fastest graphics card that I've ever seen, and it's coming up later in the show. For now, let's talk about 
I don't know, something else. Microsoft, they're thinking about doing sort of a free model like Android because Android has had a lot of success. The people, they come and they, they look at the, the you know, different operating systems out there and they're like, well, you know, if we use Android for our device, we can get it for free and then we can, you know, just profit, you know. Microsoft, they've always charged a premium and they've also charged a premium for Windows RT and that's what you get on your tablets. Now they're kind of thinking and, uh, you know, word is that if you're at the Microsoft office in Redmond and you use the word free, you are way outside of the box. But anyway, they're thinking about making RT and the mobile operating versions of Windows free. You know what I think? Because they're only like 3.6% of the, uh, of the uh, market. I think they should be freaking paying people to use it. And like, think about it. If, if Motorola, well, Motorola is Google, but uh, if, um, I don't know, Samsung, right? What if Microsoft came to them and like, listen, we'll give you $5 for every phone that you sell with Windows OS on it. Wouldn't that be a sweeter deal? Don't you think Samsung would maybe think, well, hey, hum, hold on a minute. I don't companies know, do have think? tried that. <laughs> companies have tried that in the past. I would point to the bundled software that came on like Packard Bells of vintage, you know, 97 as an example. But the irony here is so much more delicious. So like, let's let's set all that aside. And let's, let's it's like, it's like, okay, Microsoft's option to go free is under consideration by operating system chief Terry Meyerson and would involve a plan to transition to advertising and app revenue, according to the report. Does that mean you're going to get scroogled if you go with the Microsoft platform that's free? <laughs> the irony it is delicious like cake. Well, they're going to have to start harvesting data I mean, if they do it that way. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to get screwed <laughs> by data, Microsoft. All that data that, that people have been harvesting. Well, uh, <laughs> we, we all hate telemarketing calls. But um, the ones that we hate the most, and I think I'm speaking for everyone when I say this, are the ones where you, you, know, that you pick up the phone and it's a robotic voice. Your response is typically just to hang up immediately. But what if it's like you're not even sure if it's a robot or not? And what if it says that it's real when, it, when it's really a robot? Well, there's a new telemarketer that calls, and right now the, the telemarketer has been calling about insurance. It's a robot, and it swears that it's not a robot. So what the hell is going on here? Everyone's reporting that it's a robot, but it seems a little bit too smart, and there's also a lot of latency. If you guys go on here, I'll just, I'll just play a second of this, just so you can hear what it's like. Play. Hi, I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm calling about an online request you once made about health insurance coverage. Okay. I work with all major companies and compare. Here it comes. Hey, are you a robot? Long pause. <laughs> what? No, I am a real person. Maybe we have a bad connection. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's crazy. I see you just sound so much like a robot. I Mom am pause. a real person. Maybe we have a bad connection. I'm sorry about that. Will you? Okay, Wendell, you know what's up. No one's saying okay. what's up in these articles. They're not saying what's really happening. I have... I'm, I'm, let me give everyone a clue real quick. <laughs> what's the, uh, <laughs> come on, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cop, you idiot. I'm Detective John Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> that, think, start thinking about all that stuff in your head. Now go ahead, Wendell. Okay, so it turns out that in a past life, I may have worked on a system like this. This is much <laughs> more sophisticated than anything that I've worked on. This is a glorified soundboard application. It's kind of a robot, but it's kind of a person too. So there's this soundboard software where there's literally hundreds of professionally recorded voice actor or whatever you want to call it uh, things, and there's a person in India who speaks English, but not well. Maybe Russia. Not, who knows? Maybe, maybe or, not. Or Russia. It could be anywhere. Or anywhere there's a call center outside of the United States. Probably, yeah. There's probably a prison camp in Siberia where people <laughs> are being paid 20 cents a day to do these calls. <laughs> in, and uh, In America, in prison, we make paint. In Siberia, <laughs> they make calls. <laughs> <laughs> And so this thing is basically a soundboard app. It's a person listening to what they're saying, and then they just hit the they hit the uh, pre-played responses. I'm told that there are call centers now where the people are actually get pretty good with this system, and because some of the uh, pre-recorded responses take five or six or ten seconds to say, that they make the employees do two and three calls at once. And so they're 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 listening to calls and they hear what they say, and they just hit a, a playback thing where it's like, can you you know tell me whether it's this or that or the other thing? Because once you're answering questions. It's just going to record it and file it somewhere. The, the people on the call don't even have to deal with it. So this is really just a soundboard. And so somebody's recorded this. And the guy, one of the recordings, he's like, you know, just say you're not a robot. And it can't say it's not a robot because that's not one of the pre-recorded options. Yeah, we're here. Tell me. Just to go here. We'll go. You ask me a question, then I'll ask you a question. How about that? Sure. Okay. Are you a robot? Okay, listen. No. 
Will you say I'm not a robot? And nothing. So all the way through that thing, he asks like 10 times, can you just say this <laughs> phrase, I am not a robot? It can't, it can't happen. Um, can you imagine the meeting where they decided to do this? Because it's a huge customer service issue. People in America, they call uh, different countries. Maybe people in Europe, uh, you know, just whoever, they're, they're calling uh, a non-native speaker from their own tongue. Because it's cheaper to go over and hire, you know, people in, in you know, in, in a different country. It's like pennies on the dollar cheaper. Can you imagine the boardroom meeting where they're like, well, you know, our customer service, you know, is, is down. People hate to, to speak to someone. If they feel like there's a language barrier, they get angry and uh, it's just not working out. So what are we going to do? We can't move the call centers to America because that costs too much money and uh, we have too many customers. So can you imagine when they thought, wait a minute. Those soundboards. I mean, was there a technician in there who used to play around with these soundboards? And he was like, well, you know, I used to do this thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Christopher Walken back in the day, and we could probably do the same thing. Can you imagine that how excited they all got? That's exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I mean, that, this, this product was born out of that kind of thing. But, you know, by the, by the same token, if the computer had just a little bit of text recognition, like text-to-speech recognition capability... This type of approach, you could remove the human element from the equation even more so that you've got one person handling 10 calls or 20. And you could also remove the latency because there was a, there's a lot of latency where the person is there. Like You can almost just see it, like them thinking, like, okay, what did they say? They said this. I need to press this button. So there's a like five-second latency in, in between you know, the, the question and the answer in some of these, which is a dead giveaway that it's not a real human response other than the fact that it sounds the same when they repeat the same phrases and the laughs are the same there seem to be like two or three laughs but if you listen to all the all the information they put up and you put it in a, in a sound program the laughs are exactly identical which would you would not have in a normal human being yeah it's almost a little it's it's creepy eerie it's a little weird i don't know <laughs> Or we thought of that with my software, and that's why my laugh is different every time. You don't know. You don't know. Well, you know what we need to do? We, we need to find one of these, and we need to call it with a soundboard and record that. <laughs> a million hits right there. So I've just given someone an idea. Well, I tried to call the number because I was going to like talk to him on the air right now, but uh, the number no longer works. They, so they put the number right here in the in the article on time, and, of course, it's it's gone now. But I'm sure if somebody fun. submitted this idea to Howard Stern, he would somehow turn it into a thing where they end up calling a Chinese delivery service and ask them to translate or something. Oh, one of those type of things, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is, it's kind of a gray area because when the people ask if it's a robot, they always respond with, no, of course I'm a real person. Maybe your connection is bad. They always reply with, no, I'm a real person. So, I mean, is that, I mean, is, is that a... Are they, is that okay? Is that like legal? Are they allowed to say they're a real person when I guess they are kind of a real person, but they're pressing buttons? I mean, it seems like a loophole. <laughs> How cool would it be if one of the constitutional amendments was that an AI has to identify itself at all times? <laughs> an AI or otherwise artificial avatar. Oh, that'll, that'll be coming up in the next 10 years. I guarantee it. Well, I mean, if we, don't, it. If, if we don't have that, it's going to be exactly like the SNL skit where you have the old glory robot insurance. I'm signing up to be a Blade Runner. Because <laughs> everyone knows robots run on old people's medicine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Time to take a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Now, um, their sponsorship has really helped us crank out a lot of videos, so thanks very much, Squarespace. If you guys do not need a website, you can skip ahead about a minute and uh, nobody gets hurt. But if you do need a website, check this out. With Squarespace, you can easily put together a site and you can do it really quickly. And that's kind of the key. It's content forward, meaning there's not a lot of bubbly, flashy icons like you see on a lot of the canned template websites. And this one's not exactly just a canned template website. You can go on, pick a template, and then you can even log in with Git access and change the HTML and CSS. So you can do a lot with this. If you're working for a client, this can especially be helpful um, because you can get everything set up and then put together their website quickly just based upon the content that they give you. Uh, you won't have to worry about messing around a lot uh, with code. You can just get it done and then move on to the next project. And you can also save them time and money. So that's pretty cool. But let me show you what else they've added and something that I've signed up for. There's now Squarespace for musicians. So you can go on, set up your musician account, and you can integrate it with Bandcamp if you like. Buy or share, and you click buy, brings you right up to Bandcamp. If you're not using Bandcamp or you want to be able to uh, you know, more directly sell, there's now Squarespace Commerce. I work with any template, whether you're a, a musician or not. So check that out, it works with uh, Stripe. So anybody who's familiar with Stripe will know that it's good stuff. Last but not least, this can also be handy for the you know bands or anyone that's touring or just anybody that has events. There's now an events calendar. I like this theme quite a bit. Different themes for it. 
I have signed up for one of their packages for musicians, so you'll see the new Zweihander album uh, all set up very soon with a new website, and I'll let you know how that's going. So again, thanks to Squarespace, and now back to our regularly scheduled tech. Um, the former head of the Google Patent Strategy has been appointed to run the U.S. Patent Agency. She's sort of um, going to be there until they find someone else to do it. But this is a very interesting thing right now because she was in charge of Google's patent strategy, and they had they had a lot of problems. And I mean, she's in a position now where she can tie Apple up. She can like bring up a lot of Apple's old patents and bring them into question so that they're under a review, and that would m mean that Apple's no longer allowed to take people like Google to court for those patents because they're under review. She could she could wreak a lot of havoc and she could do a lot of good things for Google. How is, I mean, do you think this is going to be a conflict of interest or do you think that this, do you think she may act on behalf of Google while she's there? It seems a little strange. It does seem a little strange and the conflict of interest stuff, at least on paper, goes away after only like a year or two. So they could just, you know, waffle for a year and then do something else. Uh, it's, you know, the revolving door in Washington, even, you know, years after the people retire, they still have an interest there. I mean, just look at all the Goldman Sachs executives. It's yeah, crazy. No. <laughs> um, it, I, I would say that it's, it's kind of cool to have someone who understands technology like this in a position like this. And I, I know it's going to be, I, she, even if she does act in Google's interest, I think it would be a step forward for the uh, current uh, I guess, patent situation in Washington, which is, I don't know if that's scary or not, but it, to my, in my opinion, it could be a step forward, just having someone who understands technology in that role. Well, and we have past, to keep in mind like, the perspective with patents on Google is that when Google was first starting and the first, you know, five or 10 years of the company that was wildly successful, they didn't really think that a lot of what they were doing was patentable because, the, and some of the stuff that is patentable, they didn't want to release because it's, you know, sort of secret sauce issues. They don't want to release the secret ingredients, which right. you'd have to do in a patent. And uh, they really didn't seek patents on a lot of stuff. And, you know, and they say that they lost some of their patent cases or they settled precisely because they just didn't do the homework and the, and the documentation and, you know, file for patent and things like that. And so other companies did something similar, beat them to the punch on filing the paperwork, and, you know, Google couldn't easily prove that they had it before, so it led to a messy situation. And they're not in a mode to do that, and so it's good that they're doing this. But, you know, it's it's this story sort of interesting because Google's really late to the game here, and other companies like Microsoft and IBM have been doing this type of thing since the 80s. And so this is a story about Google doing it, and it's like, well, the story is that Google's late to the party, not that Google's doing it. Yeah, and... Uh... Take a look at companies like Apple. Uh, they have been patenting everything. I mean, it's like a circle with a white background. And they're like, it's just a circle. You can't patent that. And Steve Jobs is like, no, we can patent it. We're going to patent it. And it's going to, you know, after we get a patent on it, no one else will have circles on a white background. And, you, and Google was like, well, we've had the circle on a white background for 20 years, but we just thought that there's no way in hell anybody would patent that. We didn't even, didn't even think that it could be patented. But now Apple has a patent on it, and we're in court, billion dollars. You know, that, that's, the, that's what's going on. The famous quote from the 80s is, uh, you know, Steve Jobs was uh, was uh, at a party or something with Bill Gates, and it was like, you know, you you know, you know stole from us, blah, 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 and it's like, you know, Bill Gates was like, no, no, it's like we had this rich neighbor named Xerox, and I broke in their house to steal the TV, only to find out that you had already stolen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So accurate. <laughs> like Steve Jobs, was uh, he was big on stealing, and he, he was, he would always say things like, you know, um, the smartest people in the world steal ideas from other smart people or from smart people in the past. He was big on stealing ideas. That was not a big deal to him at all. So, but he's a recipe guy. We, we, we talked about that in our Apple video. He was yes, really good at taking ingredients from many different ideas and many different companies and putting them together into something that was somehow unique, even though the components themselves were not unique. The Apple invention video we did, still trolling trolls a year later. Somebody called me based <laughs> upon that video. And uh, actually one of our friends... Uh, one of my old friends is doing a play called Nerds, and uh, it's Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, think Silicon Valley. Uh, a couple of the writers from Robot Chicken are involved in this. The director from uh, the, the Book of Mormon on Broadway is involved in this. And I might be going down to see this in a week or so. So I'll let you guys know how it is. I'm actually very curious. It's a musical, and uh, it could be a lot of fun. But it looks to me like a very funny version of Pirates of Silicon Valley, the musical. So anyway... Um, they, they actually gave me a call and told me I should come see it because they were looking online and they found the Apple video. <laughs> so I was like, hey, there's that Apple yes. video again. Excellent. Be enlightened, our children. Be enlightened. <laughs> come into the light. <laughs>
<laughs> all right, I want to get into some heavier stuff here. Well, we got spying and all that. Yeah, let's get into spying and all that because that's all we talk about. Nothing else but <laughs> government spying and the NSA. It's, it's really easy to be angry on the internet. It's really hard to be angry in real life. <laughs> First world problems. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, we should just make a point of like acting the exact same way in public as we do on the internet. Just walk up to somebody and be like, hey, asshat, and slap them and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the ACLU has posted, uh, I guess it's sort of a, an idea of what could happen with all the data that's being mined. It's almost, this almost reminds me of like the precognitive thing from Minority Report, except without the psychic weirdness. Just all the data they pull together, they're saying that they can predict future crimes before they happen in here. And it's, it's a whole scenario uh, where they're predicting that a guy has, um, has a high likelihood of getting a DUI based upon what he does and where he goes and all the things he does. And, and it's just, it's funny. If you go through it, there, there's like a whole hypothetical situation here where they're like tracking the guy um, and they're saying like, oh, look, he, he spends a lot of time with this girl. Oh, he stays the night over at her house a lot. Oh yeah, that's interesting. It's just like, almost like they're joking back and forth. And they're like, oh, I wonder if he knows that some other guy spent the night recently. It's just, but that's all stuff that, I mean, this is a very good hypothetical, um, you know, what do I, what do I want to call way, this? Is, this is metadata. Like, this is today. This is happening right now already. Like, this is, this is a hypothetical website, but I guarantee you that at the very least, the uh, person of interest, they have done this because this is exactly, precisely the metadata that is and has been collected for the better part of a decade. This is it. This is what you can do with it. If you're curious, you should go look at it, and you're not going to sleep tonight. And the funny thing is, is they can really predict your location within a few meters at any given point in the day. And they've been, like, extremely accurate with that, just based upon your metadata. And it's kind of creepy. They've been able to find people at, like, donut shops. They were like, well, you know, we, we just had, based upon our stuff we put it all into a computer and we're like yeah he's probably going to go to the donut shop sometime between five and six today so and there he was at the donut shop it's pretty wild but anyway um it's just a real it's it's a really interesting heads up to actually put it into a situation where you can see what exactly could happen with it a lot of you guys at home uh, there are those who are like dude if i'm not doing anything wrong why would i care well, what you think is wrong may not be what they think is wrong. Maybe they look at it and they're like, well, you know, he goes to the bar and he hangs out in these social situations. He's a high risk for a DUI, even if you've never had a DUI. You know, you never know. So it's it's interesting, not it's not it's element. not just criminal. It's also you know political opponents and things like that. Or this guy doesn't toe the line. Or you know, small town politics, even in in big cities, still happens. This is this is unfortunately reality and if the data is there it will be abused it, it can't not be abused i mean there are all those cases where the nsa were the nsa employees were spying on jilted lovers and they had no idea until somebody complained and they're spying on people they want to be their lovers and all that it's just it's, it's if, pretty wild you know and the other thing that's interesting uh, an article came out this week in minnesota local police authorities have access to this data so i'm sure that that's the case in a lot of other places but in minnesota now it's it's known this is happening so it's not just the fbi or the the cia or the nsa that has access to this data it's you know the local police officials can get their hands on it if they if they ha if they have a way to i'm i'm of the opinion that the genie's pretty much out of the bottle on this already which is sad and, and unfortunate but if we're gonna if we as a group are going to come together and fight for anything to do with this i think that we ought to come together and fight for the right to be notified that we were searched that might be enough friction to at least stave off some of the abuses for a while. Because when, it, when, a, when a warrant is executed against you, I mean, you have a right to face your accuser. And even though you haven't been accused of anything or necessarily charged, I don't, this just doesn't, this doesn't seem to, to be a good direction for society to go in. I think that if, if you have a search executed against you, that you need to know the secret warrant stuff is not good it's never been good in the history of any country in the world it's not going to be good in this one you know this is um quite different from the way they do things in in places like switzerland for instance in switzerland um this sort of data or any kind of data like this any kind of personal data it's defined by their legal system as a precious good it's not like just something that's out there it's a precious good and in order to look at any of this uh, you need 
uh, I guess you need like a warrant from a judge or whatever the equivalent is over there. Let me see what it says here exactly. Um, yeah, you need per permission from a judge to in order to look at any of this stuff. So there are some countries out there that get it. And another thing that's interesting about this, um, Switzerland clearly gets it more than we do. And they're looking at us like, well, these guys are crazy. And it's really, really harming um, our, our data storage industry, um, our server industry, our cloud services industry. It's really, really damaging that. Uh, in America. And a lot of it is going over to Switzerland. So over in Switzerland right now, they're building this world, the, the world's most secure data vault. And they're not exactly saying where it is. It's somewhere in the middle of a freaking mountain. We've got four ton steel doors and they they won't tell anybody where it is. They, they, you know, no GPS location on this. It's like several hundred meters under the ground, you know, in the middle of nowhere in a mountain. It can withstand an atomic bomb. No problem. Hey, your data is still going to be there. And uh, this, this, you know, this kind of storage, there's also armed guards, you know. So, I mean, this kind of storage can be had if you need it. And it's, they're pretty much guaranteeing that no one's going to get access to your data. And that's, uh, you know, and there's also a ton of laws that are in place over there. So, um, it, they're doing really well is what I'm trying to say. They're doing really well over there because a lot of people uh, in this country and in other countries that are worried about surveillance are moving you know, their stuff to Switzerland and other company, or companies, other countries that have similar laws. And, and that's a really bad thing for the industry in this country. So anyway, that's interesting. Let's see here. It is, it is interesting that a lot of these industries are now moving overseas just because it's there's fear that we're too crazy, which is bad because our economy is not really in that good of shape anyway. Yeah, one of the guys who runs these companies, he's quoted as saying like, so we look at it and we're just like, what are they doing over there in America? Well, I guess it's good for our bottom line, you know. It's it's He said it's tripled his business within a very short time. I would believe it. Yeah, and it's probably done worse than that in the opposite direction for the business in america have you seen the time uh i do oh dear i believe it's rant 30. it is rant 30. they have um <laughs> this is a misleading article on uh giga whatever this website is it says gigabit service for 70 dollars um but it lets you spy on you it's not actually gigabit service it's just called giga something giga what giga, giga power but the highest right now offered is 300 megabits per second, according to their website. I'll bring that up in a second. Anyway, here's what AT&T is doing. They've got this new service where they're offering really high-speed internet. But there's a trade-off. The fine print is that, well, if you guys are going to get this really high-speed internet, we get to mine all of your data. We get to mine what you do, where you go, what you look at, your search history. We need to mine all that stuff so that, of course, we can give you ads and all that sort of thing. And it's going to be supplemented. The cost of it's going to be supplemented by ads, as if there was an extra cost of it. You're probably making money just on $70 as it is. But, you know, they're going to supplement the money that they're losing by giving you advertisements. And the reason this is Rant 30 is because their um, PR guy, all the way down here at the bottom, we use various methods to collect web browsing information. And we currently uh, we are currently reviewing the methods uh, we may use for the Internet Preferences Program. Whichever method is used, we will not collect information from secure HTTPS or otherwise encrypted sites such as online banking or when a credit card is used to buy something online uh, on a secure site. And we won't sell your personal information to anyone for any reason. I'm going to read that last sentence just one more time. And we won't sell your personal information to anyone for any reason. Personal information is defined as your social security number. That is all. Thank you, AT&T. Anything terms of else, service. though, anything else goes. <laughs> anything else is not defined as personal information. Only your social security number. Well, guess and who, that's only when you enter it on the non-HTTPS government sites. Guess who they've been selling stuff to? Just take one uh -oh. guess. Uh, one, one guess. Take, go ahead. Everyone? The, the CIA. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. they don't count. That's a government entity. That's special, right? Is this how we think about that? Yeah, the CA. <laughs> and of course, they've, all, they've they've probably also been selling to other branches of the you know of the, of the government. But they sold. Um, they've been selling stuff at the rate of ten million dollars per year to the CIA. Now, in their report, or what they're saying is that it only is for international phone calls. But a lot of the international phone calls are you know citizens calling outside of the country. So the people inside the country calling outside the country, that's a foreign phone call, and that can be sold to the CIA. Guys, I'd say there's like a 98% chance they're selling just about anything to anybody. And in their terms of service, if you really look at it, uh, with AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon, almost all of them have policies that say that they believe that it's okay to sell the data. 
So they're saying this. There's, they're giving you guys lip service and saying, listen, we're not going to sell any personal data. I, 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 that's, just a, that's just a freaking lie. They're selling the, most, the data. The most cynical interpretation of this, honestly, is if it's not encrypted, we can do whatever the hell we want to it. I mean, honestly, that's that's the most cynical interpretation. That's what it will evolve to be. Well, they, they were careful to specify that they don't look at things on HTTPS websites. Well, in order to do that, they would have to like hack your they would have to hack your browser basically to support an untrusted certificate. So what? Which saying, is not. Well, I mean, they, they could do that. Yeah, well, what but, they're really saying is we haven't really figured that out yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what that's saying. <laughs> we're working on it, but right now we haven't figured that out. So we're going to keep everything else, but we haven't really figured out the HTTPS thing. So we do have HTTPS on by default on our website. So if you're using them, and they can't really follow what you're doing. They can know that you came there, but they can't know what you're doing while you're on the website. The uh, it, the other interesting thing, the article didn't make the, the cut, but related to this is that Google has caught a couple people globally red-handed with fake Google certificates. And one of them was the French Ministry of Finance. Uh, apparently the French intelligence service forged Google's encryption certificates in order to, quote unquote, monitor what uh, the, the French finance ministry was doing on the internet. And so Google has instituted something to where they can maybe detect that from the end browser. Maybe they have some JavaScript or something that reports back to Google. That would be deliciously clever. And uh, there, it's, there's more than just that. That's all that's public so far, but there will be more. You you watch the news, we'll report on it. There are. Uh, it's going to be really interesting because I think what Google's developing, they're going to release for a lot of companies to use, and then overnight uh, you're going you're to have um, SSL certificate auditing services right in the browser to check to see if you've not got a fake SSL certificate. Now, hey, and this then, SSL is not genuine, something like well, that. Well, it, it's going to turn into an arms race because then the other people are going to look for that in the pages and try to alter that out. But <laughs> but it's a game of cat and mouse, and I think Google's always going to be able to move faster. Now, speaking of Google, I do want to bring up Google in this whole conversation because Google does have um, you know their gigabit plans. I mean, even though this one's not exactly gigabit, it's 300 megabits, but they're going to be faster sometime soon, 300 megabits, and then they're going to get faster as time goes on or whatever the hell they do. Um, but Google, you know, the reason I think that they did this is not because they wanted to be an ISP, but because they really wanted the internet to be fast everywhere because they benefit from the fact that everyone has a fast connection because they're everywhere. They're all over the internet and they do harvest your data. That's how, that's where Google ads come from. That's why the ads are very personal. You know, like if you ever like I don't know, something bad happened, you, you fell and you landed on you landed on an icicle, then you did a Google search, and the next day, all day long, you're getting Google ads for hemorrhoid creams. Maybe someone, maybe your friend comes over and sits down and he's like, dude, why are all these hemorrhoid cream ads coming up here? Like, I don't know, leave me alone. So that's what Google's doing. They're looking at everything. They're even looking in your Gmail. So is this very different than what, you know, AT&T is doing, or is, is Google somehow better than AT&T? And is AT&T just catching a lot of flack here because they're perceived by the public eye to be a, a more evil company than Google? What do you think? I think that it, it, there is a, it is sort of a, a black and white situation. Uh, and, and there is a lot of truth to that, fortunately or unfortunately. I'm not, it's, it is true that Google and AT&T are doing much the same thing, but I have to believe that Google has executed on that with more technical competency than AT&T. That said, I would like it if both of them would stop it. But... <laughs> yeah, we, need, we actually, have you seen the website? Somebody made a ministry of stop it .com. <laughs> Did you see it? Well, we need to email them that Let because that's how quick. it ought to be. Yeah, just, uh... that's all right. Anyway, I do want to look at this really quick. Um, the, what is it, the national intelligence thing? The, um, the uh, Office for the Director of National Intelligence, they've launched a satellite and I just wanted to bring this up because the, God, this is hilarious. Have you seen the logo for this thing? The octopus just sucking on America? And it yes. says nothing is beyond our reach. Yeah. Guys, you're doing That's, it wrong. Yeah, a little bit. I wanted to mention it because someone in the comments found an old piece of uh, propaganda um, from, I guess, back during one of the World Wars or something. Maybe it was back during the Cold War, but it's got a picture of America. It's got a, an octopus sucking on the world and on the bottom it says know your communist enemy yeah so i'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that uh that's clearly a case of megalomania and there is medication for that that's what we need we need like <laughs> we need to fund for medication for all these megalomaniacs <laughs> yeah yeah all right let's move on to talk about some hardware 
uh, we've, we've got a video coming up, uh, actually probably up, it's up, right, up like probably right now on the ASRock ITX system that you have there, the M8 or the Mate. Yeah, the, the it M8. Mate. It's a micro ATX whatchamajigger. And I've been playing with some small systems as well. I, I went with the micro ATX. I've got the, uh, the Phoenix Colossus micro ATX. You guys can check out that video if you're looking for a micro ATX case. It's pretty much the same frame as the, um, the Prodigy. It's like the same size, but it's micro ATX. You can fit more in it. I'll be doing some builds in that one pretty soon. ASRock has four new motherboards featuring the, I guess, the killer brand, or the killer brand Nix, and the Fatality branded. There's a lot of, you know, they got a lot of loaded stuff in there. Uh, but these are interesting. They've got the um, M2 sockets, so you guys can install, you know, storage right that way. The, it's, it's pretty basically PCI Express or, or whatever. We um, actually have in the building the B85 killer that we're going to do a review on. Oh, you've got that one? Yes. I, I didn't even know you had that one. Yes, I got that like two days ago. I think it's interesting also because there's the Z87, the B85, but they've also released a 990FX and an FM2 board. So they're still supporting those platforms, and AMD has not updated those platforms in forever. I guess the FM2 gets updated a lot, but the 990FX has, has not been updated. But there's a lot of really interesting modern features on this 990FX uh, motherboard. So if you're someone who's looking for a, you know, a 990FX or you know an AM3 motherboard with a lot of really cool features, it could be an interesting way to go. I, I would like to play with one of those myself. Uh, AMD, they've come out and said that they are not EOLing, like end of life, they're not EOLing the FX line because they released a, a, a roadmap or a roadmap was leaked and it you know showed all the way to the end of 2014, no updates for the FX flavors. There's some updates coming for the Opterons and the, you know, the server grade parts where they're gonna get 12 and 16 core parts, but nothing for the FX line. So everyone was like, oh, that's it. AMD's done, no more FX, it's, it's gone. Ah, it's a sad day, no more enthusiast parts from AMD. But that is not the case. Uh, AMD came out and said that the FX brand is not dead, and I think I know what's going to happen. It's I'm going to agree with XBit Labs. I believe that in the future we are going to see some 8-bit parts, maybe even some 12-bit parts, but they're probably going to have an integrated uh, GPU as well. There'll be APUs, and I think they're going to go that way because if, if you look at the, the the recent you know next-gen consoles, those were all um, like you know high-powered APUs. I don't know. What do you think? I think FX. APU, that's the winning formula. That's the way to go. I would love to see a really cheap Opteron. I've got some really old Opterons that um, were some really solid 64-bit Linux systems. I would love to have a really cheap, inexpensive Opteron. Right now, the value proposition's not been there for me because I can get a $300, $400 uh, Xeon E5 1230V3, and it's like it's like three to four hundred dollars. Um, through my sources for the case motherboard power supply and for like an entry level server or a Linux box in a closet doing, you know, small business stuff or whatever, that is a solid value. And I, they're, like AMD should own this market and they don't. And it's frustrating. Well, I mean, is an, 80, an 8350 there with error correcting RAM would do better than the Xeon, but the Optron parts are more than twice as expensive as the Xeon, which is crazy. I mean, look at their, their, their Opteron stuff coming out next year. They've got Warsaw coming out. That's 12 to 16 pile driver CPU cores. It's still 32 nanometers, so it's probably going to be a, a power hog, and it's probably going to be a, a bit warm. But 12 and 16 cores, that, how are they going to fit that? How are they going to fit that on a 32 nanometer part? That's, uh, yeah. It would be nice if maybe they took one of those and just said, you know what, let's let's slap an FX sticker on this and, and just make it a consumer grade part. You know, just take one of those and maybe change it just a little bit. I mean, that's kind of what they did with the 8350. I mean, really, it, it was pretty much a part that was designed to be in servers. And they were like, you know what, let's just slap uh, the FX sticker on there and let's go ahead and just call this a consumer grade part so we can, they really just wanted to say, hey, we made the first consumer eight core uh, desktop thing. That's really what they wanted to do. Maybe they'll do it with one of these. Who knows? This is the market that Intel is not serving that AMD could absolutely take over the universe for, and that is in large and medium enterprises, they are building computing clusters from the cheapest, crappiest computers ever. What I need is something that is that is like three nines reliability, like an 8350 or four nines. Not It doesn't need to be five nines like everything else. Opteron and Xeon are five nines of like 99.999% yeah. reliability. And I need something that's like three nines, doesn't cost a whole lot of money, and I can buy a ton of them 
because I need a I need a Hadoop cluster and I need some other stuff and it just needs to be like the cheapest, crappiest machines ever and the software will deal with that. If you buy them in bulk, they could afford to do an equivalent to like an eighty three fifty for less than two hundred dollars a part. That's cheap. Yeah. And they could absolutely take over because Google and Facebook and all the other people have already figured it out. And Facebook is so into this, they're doing their own hardware. I mean, that doesn't make any damn sense. Somebody get off their ass and fix this. All right. Uh, did you see the uh, the Kingpin from EVGA? They, they had the 780Ti, and I've got one of those. I've got the super clocked edition with the ACX cooling unit. And then they had the 780Ti classified. It makes me jealous. And now they've got the 780Ti classified Kingpin edition. This thing is ridiculous. Um... It, first off, 450 watts of dedicated power going to this graphics card. It's a totally custom, uh, you know, t totally proprietary thing going on here. 14 plus three phase power design. 14 phases of power going to the GPU and three phases for the uh, the three gigabytes of GDDR5. But look at this. It requires two eight pin plus one six pin PCI Express power connectors. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. They haven't released one. any specifications. <laughs> on you know like um they haven't, they haven't released any uh, frequency information or anything like that so i don't know what it's going to be clocked at but it's going to be stupid these things are all going to be like hand picked and hand built this is going to be a special edition card where they only make like a thousand but that's okay because it's probably going to be crazy there's going to be a lot of people doing some seriously crazy stuff with this i mean if it's cheaper than a titan go for it what the hell and this, this is probably going to be a really, a, a really the Titan killer. I mean, the 780 Ti was pretty much a Titan killer, except for the fact that some games do like more than three gigabytes of RAM, maybe one or two games out there. But this one, if it's just, if it's just that much faster, it's really going to be a Titan killer. Oh, well, uh, we've also got that upcoming NZXT video. The right. NZXT video is going to be, it's a G10, it's their GPU adapter, for um you know their uh nzxt cpu coolers i mean it's aztec compatible it's compatible with all the aztec based coolers but uh so yeah you got the you got the 290x that says the you know the amd 290x that's as loud as a vacuum cleaner or you know the 780 or the 780 ti or whatever you get the g you get the uh, g10 uh, gpu adapter and you know like an, an a kraken x60 you're done you're doing water cooling on your on your gpu it works great uh, we've got a video coming up with that. We've actually got a dual radiator system that we're testing right now. It's got dual 140s um, for the CPU and a 140 for the GPU, and uh, it's it's whisper quiet and overclocked like crazy. That that was going to be my first question: was how loud is it? Because some radiators on the market out there are quite loud, so it's not that loud then. This thing is whisper. I am disturbed at how quiet it is and how much heat it puts off. Well, cheers, NZXT. I'll uh, I'll let you guys buy me a beer at CES. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's take a look at the NVIDIA G-Sync. Some of the reviews have been coming out in uh, non-tech. They're usually pretty happy about NVIDIA products, but they, they tested it out. Um, and they, the, 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 there's a long article. The consensus is that it makes gaming nice and silky smooth and beautiful. The problem that we have right now is that if you don't have on... Um, uh, V-Sync, a lot of times you'll get tearing because the, the I guess it, uh, the frame renders, but it doesn't match up with the refresh rate of your monitor. So, you, you know, the frames get spit out when your monitor's in the middle of a refresh and it just, it doesn't line up correctly. But when you turn on V-Sync, um, it, it basically waits to send the frame to the monitor based upon the refresh rate and that can cause stuttering. But G-Sync fixes both of those problems, no tearing, no stuttering and you have to have a G-Sync enabled monitor. So look for G-Sync enabled monitors coming out. I, I just don't want to have to go out and rebuy a new monitor. I'm kind of bummed about that. So <laughs> We will find a way to mod our $300 Korean monitors. Yeah, that's what I really want. I want a Shimian with G-Sync. There's a London designer who has uh, created a 3D printable shoe. It looks like no shoe that I've ever seen, and it has organic living components. And here's the funny thing. When, you, when you're done, you come home and you throw this thing into like a vat of something and the shoes repair themselves. I, I've, I've been saying for a long time I would like to see more science fiction films that use organic matter for everyday objects, like a car that regrows a bumper or this, like a pair of shoes like this that regrow themselves in the evening so you don't wear out, wear out your shoes or get holes in them or something. I, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, I don't think that a lot of people are going to be using these, but these things are specifically molded uh, to the, the runner's feet. So they're, it basically feels like you're barefoot, 
but um, I don't know. Maybe some all, maybe someday we'll all, all have shoes that regrow. No, it's well. It's, this is temporal because uh, there'll be people that are modifying our um, genetics to grow real shoes on our feet. Then you'll have to wear the same pair of shoes all the time. <laughs> but maybe it's removable. I don't know. It's really interesting we have shoes. I was sure that the first invention like this was going to be the Santa cow. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> but I'll, I'll deal with shoes. Shoes are okay. This might solve problems in the third world. Um, you know, you'll have Monsanto that'll be like, you've grown an unlicensed pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They're going to start putting patents on everything and be like, oh, wait a minute, your hands have to come off. They belong to us. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Like, no, those hands are not authorized. They contain Monsanto DNA. I'm pretty sure I saw that in Deus Ex. The, the people would come and repossess the, uh, the, oh, yeah. the uh, augments. <laughs> hmm. They're Seraph Industries? Is that what you're saying? Monsanto yeah. is going to become Seraph Industries? Like the, the dark, evil version of Seraph Industries <laughs> that runs unchecked by any regulation or government. I mean, Seraph's already pretty shady, but yeah. Anyway. Um, let's talk about some gaming while we're on the subject of Deus Ex. Have you seen the new game from the uh, from Gary of Gary's Mod? He's making a game called Rust, and it's probably going to appeal to. Actually, she's playing it back over there right now. Like she just just picked it up. Uh, it's in uh, early access right now, and it looks like it's going to appeal to kind of the Daisy crowd. And it, right now, it has zombies in it. But I'm actually very happy to report that no zombies soon. They decided that they are sick of zombies. They put zombies in the game, and they're going to take them all out. So there'll be no more zombies. The enemies are going to be the environment and other people. So that's it. You're going to have to build a shelter. and You don't want to freeze to death. You don't want to starve to death. Uh, and you have to watch out for all the other people who are running around trying to kill you. So have you, have you seen this one yet? Yeah, I looked at the video. And it, it's funny because people running around, they're not necessarily going to try to kill you. But it's going to descend into mayhem and insanity, just like DayZ. You know, it's already... There's already a lot of stuff going on on the website on their, on their forum because apparently when you spawn you're naked, and so all these naked people are running around these naked men and people are freaking out on the forums because no one's ever seen a naked man before they've only seen naked women so I think it's kind of funny if you look on the <laughs> forum they're like what uh, uh. people are like they're going ballistic about this they can't believe that it's happening they can't believe they saw a, a digital man part <laughs> they're freaking out it's hilarious but um, other than that I haven't seen too many complaints on the forum. <laughs> oh God! Well, you guys, are you guys afraid? You might like it. I'm moving on. <laughs> it's there's a video. You can go watch the video. There's a guy. I mean, it's just you know he's got rocks and sticks basically when you start, but you know, you you keep playing and you can build a large structure and it <laughs> looks like there were people with guns. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of curious about it as well. I might pick it up and, and play it. The other game I'm really curious about right now is Samurai Gun. Um, this is a goofy looking website, but yeah, I'll just move on past Samurai Gun. Let me know if any of you guys have Samurai Gun because I might want to pick it up and uh, play some online. It's just a, a 2D game where you're, you're a samurai, you have a gun that has three bullets, and you have a samurai sword. And you just jump around, on it's a platformer, and you jump around and try to kill each other. So it's a deathmatch. But I like that limitation of only having three bullets and having a samurai sword. That, that could be a lot of fun, knowing that your opponent has wasted two shots. You just need to get him to waste that last one, and then you can <laughs> take him out. Uh, the DRM free winter sale is going on right now on Good Old Games, and there are a lot of interesting games on Good Old Games. The Witcher Two is on sale. System Shock Two is on sale. Um, let's see, uh, Dragon Commander, Legend of Grimrock for seven fifty. If you guys haven't played that, it's an awesome old school RPG. Um, there's a lot of interesting sales. I like what they're doing right here, where they have this thing where you can pick a gift every day. You can pick Timeless Classics, Brave New Worlds, or Random Magic, and you will get an assortment of gifts. You get to pick it once uh, each day, and you'll get, like, I don't know, whatever that bundle is, you'll get to pick that up at a really low price. So, yeah. I have to log in to do that, so that's kind of cool. And uh, last but not least, if you guys are looking for game deals for the holidays, check out uh, the game deals on our website. Just text syndicate.com slash game deals. We help you guys get a deal. We make a penny. It's good for the website. It's good for you. Uh, anything else I need to talk about here? That's uh, pretty much everything we have to talk about today. If, uh, oh no, the memory card's full. Well, that was good. I'll let you do the ending here. Um, yeah, so this is yeah. this is the ending. Uh, rate, subscribe. We want to see you next time. Uh, be on the lookout for our upcoming videos: the Azrock M8, the Azrock B85, the NZXT, Liquid Cool, everything. And I've you got a liquid. 
I'm liquid gonna... cool and AMD card because AMD hasn't done it yet and you can just do it yourself. And I've also got a bunch of audio file stuff coming up really, really soon. We've got some guys uh, coming over, some secret guys coming over to town to talk about audio file stuff. And we've got a bunch of headsets from SteelSeries. So there's going to be a lot of videos coming up. And then CES is going to happen and it's going to be crazy. CES is going to be completely nuts. We are all going to CES. It is going to be completely insane. So a lot of stuff to look forward to. We will see you guys next week, next time, next video. See ya.